I rarely, rarely speak from the soul on my platform, but on this good morning, we gonna have to speak on it. So hello y'all, uh, welcome to Pop Rose. It is Friday, um, Friday morning here. Because 2000, August 21st or 23rd, on or about those dates, I joined the United States Army. This is not what the I fought for. This is not what I put a 80 pound rucksack on my back and marched 22 miles with an M16 for. This is not why I to this day can still shoot you between the eyes from over 300 meters. This is not the country I was going to defend. I am sickened, I am disgusted. They may as well have reinstated slavery because they certainly have for women and women of all color. I, I like, I, I truly have no words and you know I never shut up. I, I don't know how to articulate my anger, my disgust, my disappointment my rage, because that's where we are right now, Vanessa. We are in rage. Why does my sister have to be impregnated by a cousin and carry that baby to term? Why does my friend have to die during her pregnancy? Because of old white men. That's why, that's why. Normally, this is a platform of joy and a place to escape these kinds of topics, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna throw the fuck up. It's very disgusting. Um, unfortunately, we did see it coming when it was leaked that they were about to do this. This could have been avoided. This could have been avoided in 2016. It could have been avoided like by voting. That man, that, that orange subhuman, he put three Supreme Court justices on the bench. Three, three lifetime ones. So we never really had a chance. So they're, they're reaping the benefits of that. If you didn't vote in 2016, this is your fault. This is your fault. And if you're a woman that didn't vote in 2016, this is, this is on your hands. It's a gut punch this morning. I was having a good day. It's finally sunny in New York. And now you have to move to Portugal with me because they're coming for us next. I suggest we get the fuck out of this continent before they reinstate slavery. I'm out and I have lawyers on retainer. So good luck, Chuck. Good luck. Get on. I, I'm going to tell you what Ario Nassis told Jackie. Get on the boat. I'll say you were right. I, I was just getting to that. Like gays and trans rights are next. And, and black rights and black right. rights. Slavery will be instated. Pack your shit. Pack your shit and get out. Thank God my dad love, does live in Portugal. I have lawyers on retainer. If you want out, I have a path for you. But I'm telling you, get on the right. boat. Um, yes, gays and trans rights is usually right after that. And then black and civil rights is soon afterward. What is there to do? I mean, it does feel a little hopeless, especially because we have a lame duck president that's not doing shit. I mean, if this doesn't motivate us to vote, then I don't know what'll work. And I feel bad for people that are in red states. At least we have the privilege, like especially in California. California can be its own country at this point. I'm moving to Portugal with my father. I am leaving the United States bullshit. Good night and good luck. But yeah, like if you're not in the blue state, uh, I mean, I worry for you, really, because they already have evidence that Clarence Thomas, that that um, raccoon, can't say the other word, but uh, he's ready. He's looking at, you know, gay rights and contraception and shit like that. It's crazy. Like, first, there shouldn't even be life appointed judges now. That should be like elected, just like presidents are. I wish people used to die. People just need to start dying earlier. You know That's what? True. Maybe life has gotten too damn long. Maybe all we need is a good 60 years. Because honestly, at 40, I'm like, I don't know what more there is to do. It, it's sad that we have to wait till these people die out of office. But the only uptick I've been seeing in death is people at their own hands. 
And COVID is not help. COVID, all you did was fuck shit up. You had one job, nigga. You had one job and you couldn't get it done. It, it's hard out here. And I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like it is hard for people. Like inflation is going up. Everything is expensive. Everything. Like it, what it used to be is you work your job that you hate. And then you have time off for yourself and you get to fly somewhere or something. You can't even do that now. The minimum to fly now is $400. And that's just for me to get to like get, go home, you know? I mean, we might have to do my birthday in Vegas rather than Mexico. Like this is Pride Month. Like this is Pride Weekend. What to celebrate? What is there to celebrate? Because we're next. And that's the thing. We were just hoping for a nice happy pride episode to end the week and the majority of our friends our viewers our supporters are women who are affected by this or men who love women who will be affected by this because guess what we're all fucking you it's like why 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 are we so anti-human why are we, this is an anti-human policy. Nobody wins with this. It just, like my mind, like I, I can't, like I, I'm tired of trying to understand what I can't understand. I am at the end of my rope. I'm about to sing, you know the earth is ghetto. And I don't want to leave life. I just want to leave earth. Like, can we go to Mars or something where people got some sense? This is who they cater to in this country. White, hetero, male, Christian. Like you gotta fit. I'm sorry, all those. You, you forgot the most important. Rich. Yep. Rich those is at five, the top of the list. But you know, we have a job to do still. <laughs> we persevere and we, we try to put a smile on people's faces. But we want you to know that we are just as upset, as sickened as frustrated, as tired as you are. Maybe not as you are, but believe me, we are with you. And this is your decision. This is your body. This is your health and the health of your family, the health of your other children. It's not even like there's a panel of doctors saying, oh, you should do this or you. It's not even doctors would say, the fuck? Mm -hmm. Every pregnancy is different. All this is going to do is you're going to have an uptick in illegal abortions. Which are going to hurt women in the long run. Yep. Rob women of the ability to have children when and if they choose to. Or the, the ability to just breathe and be alive. Mm -hmm. If you don't want children, child, that's your choice. That is your, in the words of James Caldwell, Pennsylvania privilege. If it ain't for you, it ain't for, it's nobody's business. Why you make that choice? Nobody's business. And they just extended the Second Amendment too. The right to carry guns. That's what they're worried about. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking I'm going to be in Portugal in October. Um, I will still be able to vote in America uh, because I'll have dual citizenship. Um, just let me know if you want a ticket. Just let me know. I was right with the penny. I'm going to go in and trust my gut on this one too. Rogers out. Toodles toots. It's been real, America. It's been real. <laughs> Not toodles toots. Toodles toots. You ain't bringing my ass back. Mm-mm. Right. I'm sorry. I like my cushy life, my cushy job. I ain't picking no cotton. And America, right, don't, so. America don't produce shit. No way, I'm telling you, don't trust no nigga, don't trust no Christian. I blame Democrats just as much as I blame Republicans. Like, Republicans, they, they plan to win. Democrats are still playing by the rules. And I think that's the problem. Because there are no rules for Republicans. They're doing what they want. We had an all-blue Senate and Obama as president. We did not get, not, well, hardly anything done. You know, it, it's very discouraging. You're seeing that we got Biden in office and this still happens. So we can live in Lipson or we can live in Porto. My dad lives in Porto. And the thing is, because we have a business together, it'll be a lot easier for me to get you over there, especially with my family connections. So I'm, I'm going to tell you, you might want to think on it. You might want to let some wheels in your head turn. I know you got family here. Guess what? We can bring them over too. 
Well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna leave you or yours. I'm looking forward to those beautiful uh, postcards from Portugal from you. <laughs> All right. So y'all, after this word from our sponsors, we are gonna get on with this episode and try to make y'all laugh through this through this dark ass shit today. We all know how important sleep is for health, for wellness, and for mental fitness. And that's why we're so excited to tell you about our newest sponsor, GhostBed. Their products are absolutely amazing and truly some of the best in the mattress and sleeping game. GhostBed is made by Nature Sleep, a company with over 20 years experience in the mattress game. GhostBed products are designed with cooling features, and that includes not just the mattresses, but the sheets and the pillows too. It's perfect when you sleep warm, like most of us do. You'll get a mattress dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Shipping is free and fast. You can try your mattress for 101 nights and get an industry-leading warranty for up to 25 years. So I recently got a ghost pillow from Ghost Bed a couple weeks ago, and I've been having great sleep ever since. At the end of a long day of editing, I put my head down on that pillow. It is cool, and it's like I'm resting my head on a cloud. Ghost Bed is a family-owned business with 20 years of experience. They have quality and comfort at affordable prices. It is backed by a 20 to 25-year warranty, two times the industry standard. You can also try it out for 101 nights, and if you don't like it, you can return it and get your money back, no hard feelings. It's free shipping and most orders ship within 24 hours. It's also zero down and 0% APR financing. To find your perfect mattress, check out ghostbed.com slash roast. Right now, Ghostbed is offering our listeners 40% off Ghostbed bundles where you get a mattress and adjustable base. Or 30% off site-wide, that's 30% off all mattresses plus two luxury pillows. Use promo code ROSE at ghostbed.com slash ROSE. Hurry and take advantage of these savings. That's ghostbed.com slash ROSE and use promo code ROSE. So let's have a positive pride moment. What is Beyonce? Also- Beyonce. Let's talk about Beyonce because that is what makes me happy and i think it'll make some of you happy with this song uh it's called break my soul we already talked about it on pop rose extra but we didn't talk about it on here <laughs> so when i heard the song i was like okay i'm feeling this and then because it leaked first and i hate leaks i really do as a uh, a diamond level high member but yeah, Big Frida's on it. She incorporated that that 90s house where it was, you know, where house was still black and, and the whites didn't appropriate it with the oomphs oomphs. It's infectious and if not mindless, like it really feels good dancing to it. I like, I, I would give it an eight out of 10. It, like it's not flawless, literally. It's not flawless, but I like it. What do you think? I think that you are my best friend. You're not just my business partner. You are my best friend because only my best friend could try my patience like this this morning and me not have a reaction. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I am happy with the song too. Uh, the only reason I'm irritated is because I like TikTok. And now it's like every other TikTok is that song. And it's like, now, now, hold on. Now, come on. Come on now. It, it's not it's overplay coming. it. Let's not overplay it. And also why I'm pissed is I haven't heard it when I've been out. And I'm like, I kind of want to hear it like when I'm out so I can shake my shimmy. And it hasn't made it to the rotation of the playlist yet where I'm like, I haven't been able, like, I want to hear it when I'm out. I don't want to hear it on TikTok for like 30 seconds. So right when I get my shoulders going, then it's over. Right. Like all we see on TikTok right now is just like, come on, break my soul. Like you have these fifth white people doing these dances. I'm like, please. But you know, it's the, it's the generation Z, you know, they, they got to have their TikTok. I still don't have one. Like I just, I simply have one to watch other people's TikTok. 
because I don't have time. I don't have an hour to make a 15 second video. Right. We have to make money. A lot of people are comparing it to Drake because Drake had his surprise album. I think it's two different sounds. Uh, one person is making gumbo while the other made chicken noodle soup. I just don't think about Drake. I was hoping that we had a video since it is Friday, but you know, the queen works in mysterious ways. And I'm just going to wait till July 29th. I think my standom has calmed down. But if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all can see that it comes out. It has not time. calmed down. <laughs> but yeah, y'all let us know what y'all think about this, you know, Beyonce single. Are y'all excited for this era? Since we're talking about music, let's talk about this disaster of a versus. This happened last night. I did not watch it. Last night, I was busy celebrating Pride with a verse, so I miss verses. Lucky you. That's <laughs> why I'm still in last night's clothes. Honey, I got jeans on. I have jeans on at eight at 9.08 in the morning. I am still in last night's You know, no, can... I just spent the night at my friend's house and he lives in the same apartment complex that I do. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Sure, Jan. <laughs> ah! uh, we can always expect Alexander, Diane Rogers to get a leg up. <laughs> Seriously. But versus. So the main battle was Omarion versus Mario. They were not doing 20 songs because, I mean, seriously. They don't have them. Oh, wait, hold on. Somebody uh, on Twitter said, I need an album, and then listed 11 of my songs. Oh, wow. Hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. We got to read it off. Because I was like, I didn't know I had 11 songs. We love y'all for real. For real? Wait, here we go. Here we go. I need this album, allegedly. Feels like a sneaker. Weekend Mom. The Rob Interlude. Cocaine. Backpedaling Pussy Pop. Beat My Ass. Pepperidge Farm Interlude. <laughs> <laughs> the Unit. Pregnant in the Anus. And track 11 is the allegedly reprise. <laughs> There you have it. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about it. And I got a couple more hits. I got the wet-ass pussy spiritual version. <laughs> and I know I got um the odometer song. Um, And I, I know I got one or two more. Let me find out Alice can do his own verses. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I forgot about one of those songs. Um, Say the first four again. Allegedly, Feels Like a Sneaker, Weekend Mom. The Rob interlude. The next one? Cocaine. Keep going. Backpedaling pussy. Yes, pussy. yes, that one. Backpedaling pussy. pussy pop. Backpedaling, Backpedaling pussy pop. pop. <laughs> wow, you really have all these songs. That I made myself. Yeah. Come on, ownership. So because they didn't have enough songs to fill a verses, they brought out a bunch of verses uh, in R&B. They brought out Bobby Valentino, Ray J, Pleasure P, and Sammy. They had their own verses between each other as, I guess, as the opening act of the performance. People actually paid for this. A lot of uh, coonery happened during this show. Ray J sounds awful. Please, if you find the clip, I'm sure y'all saw it already. He had his kid in his hand as he was singing One Wish. And I had one wish. He then got mad at the other three for singing his song better than he did. He looked so butthurt. And it was just like, I'm sorry, sir. Like your penis, you can no longer perform like that anymore. Especially it, it, on camera. It, it was quite the joke. But so were Omarion's vocals. Like, I would say Ray J's vocals were the setup, but Omarion's vocals were the punchline. Quiet as it's kept, that made me want to come out with the album more than ever because at my 40-year-old age, I can still out-sing them. Oh, I heard it. Icebox. I, I used to love that song. And he butchered it. Oh. he I really want to thank the dog because I'm tired of trying he was all of our crushes in that music video.
Oh, I, I'm alone here. The cheese stands I mean, alone. He, Honey, he, I'll be Gouda all day on that one. He didn't do it for me. Quiet as his kept. But he did know, it for me, he, honey. He did it for me. And he looks good now. I'm not going to take that I, away from him. I wanted to be the other to his icebox. Well, all right. Mario looked amazing. Mario could get it. I was looking at him. I was like, oh, well, he, he didn't age very nicely. They both looked amazing. They both, like, skin, abs. They were still giving very beautiful. So the main battle began. Mario actually surprised everybody. Like, he gave vocals, like, runs after runs. And he really embarrassed Omarion. A lot of people thought, oh, it's Omarion. He has all these hits, like B2K, him, and all that. But Mario embarrassed him. Like, in the beginning of the verses, he said he was bringing out his band members. And he had three people come out doing that Omarion dance, like that bump, 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 bump right in front of him. Mario had the balls to say, y'all niggas sound crazy. And then followed to sing them all under the table. Oh, I think, like, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, chat. He either ate watermelon on stage or he brought his brother on stage to eat watermelon. Oh, Mario. It was both. It was both. They both had large slices of watermelon that they were basically giving fellatio to. It was a very sexual consumption. Fellatio or cunnilingus? Cunnilingus, I'm sorry. Okay, I mean, as we, as much as I would like to see them give fellatio. It was cunnilingus. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I think someone ate the watermelon after them, like in the audience, I think. Not with the vibe eye running around. I ain't doing that. And Do you want to enjoy new puzzles that are challenging, yet not impossible? Then I suggest you try Best Fiends. Now, I ain't telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. Now, a few weeks ago, I told you I was on old level 3088. Well, now I'm on level 4,022. When I tell you I love this game, I mean it. It is challenging. It is relaxing. It is escapism, but it is also fun. My favorite character is Hatterbam with his big red bomb that clears all the items on the board. I would say my second favorite character is Nom, which gives you three extra moves. And once you download Best Fiends, you can play it anywhere, like in the elevator, on the train, on a plane. Yes, no internet connection is needed. Collect tons of fiends that get power up as soon as you play more levels. It's new challenges and thousands of puzzles to play. So download Best Fiends for free from the App Store or Google Play. Plus, earn even more with $5 worth of in-game rewards when you reach level five. That's friends without the R, best fee. Speaking of the vibe, have you been hearing about these monkey pox? Yes, I have. Oh, my God. Like, and they're targeting the gay community on this, and I don't like where this is going. The reason that more gay people know that they have it is because we get tested more often. A lot of us get tested every three months for our either prep or our PEP. So we're, you know, a community that goes to the doctor more than most people. So that's why things will show an uptick in us versus others. But that does lead to stigmatism. You're absolutely right. I have an appointment for my vaccine next week. Yeah, so they're giving out uh, monkeypox vaccines. Um, it was an announcement this weekend during Pride. <laughs> But back to Versus, my main idea on this all, they should stop it. Like Versus was special. You know, we had legends on Versus. This could have been iconic and now it's, it's a joke. It was something to get us through the pandemic. Now we're through the pandemic and they had the good people while they got them. You know, we're not gonna have another Gladys Knight versus Patty LaBelle where Gladys Knight sung Patty under the table. I'll stand on that hill till I die. I'm sorry. I'm not discounting Patty's contributions or Patty's hits in any way. But on that night, Gladys sung Patty under the table. Patty didn't even try to sing. Gladys just got out here and gave us 
hit after hit, no rehearsal, just got out there and sang like she was still 25. I'm going to say it loud and proud, Gladys, Gladys. That was incredible. That is a concert that should go down in American history, in Black history, in singer history, in vocalist history. Girl, you did that. And I say girl because you sang with the voice of a girl as a grown woman, which shows you truly know how to protect and preserve your instrument. I ain't saying Patty can't sing. I ain't saying that. But I'm saying Gladys that night sang every song better. I'm here for voice preservation, but I just think capitalism ruined verses. I mean, they sold it off. It's become like a cash grab. And people said, oh, but it was entertaining. Yes, train wrecks are entertaining. We, we watch reality shows for a living. We, we know it's entertaining, but there's some, there was a prestige to it. Like there was artistry and now it's just clownery. It was a moment for artists when they had our attention to truly get on stage. I will say when um, Escape and SWV did it, it was truly a celebration of preserved vocals. Now, I'll say this. I don't think any of them heifers can sing by themselves, but when they get in their group, they can remind us. You bringing that up, like it celebrates black artists who typically weren't by the mainstream and they all get their flowers. So you got a bunch of um, ninjas coming up here, like singing any kind of way, sounding terrible, eating watermelon on stage, throwing insults at each other. Like it's just, it's clownery on this land. I will say, I feel like black people should be able to eat watermelon whenever the fuck they want. They should, they should, but and in there that kind of way. No, and, and honestly, it should be a big fuck you to honkies. Like I would happily eat watermelon on stage. Now my watermelon will be sliced and with blueberries and a little bit of feta cheese because that's how I've always eaten it with my watermelon salad in the summer. Um, and I do put raisins in my chicken salad. And if you don't, your chicken salad is probably dry or too mayonnaise -y. However, speaking of that, let, let, let's get a poll started. Will y'all eat watermelon on stage or like, cause look. Or on camera. On camera. <laughs> like the thing is, I used to work at an all white establishment and there was watermelon that day. I love watermelon, but I just did not feel comfortable. And maybe it's a stigma that, that started, but that's just how I feel. I got over that when I was in the army and I did my um, job training at Fort Jackson, uh, South Carolina, which was right outside of Columbia. And we had black cooks in the DFAC. So we would get fried chicken, watermelon, like all the shit I would like to eat. And there were a lot of white people. And I was like, either I'm going to eat this in front of them and not give a fuck, or I'm not going to eat what I want. I'm going to grab this slice of honeydew and this dry ass hamburger. I said, no, I'm getting the chicken and the watermelon that I deserve. And guess what? If these honkies got an opinion, so the fuck be it. Because their opinion don't pay my bills. And guess what? It still don't to this day. And now you work at an all black establishment. Right. But let me just clear something up because people like to take a snippet and run with it. I don't give a fuck what white people think. I'm just saying for me, for my comfortability, that's all. <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't care. And I wasn't putting him down. I was just saying, I specific, me, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> because I was putting it in a situation where I didn't have a choice where I was, you know, on stage in the, in the mess hall, in the cafeteria. So it was like, look, I'm either going to eat what I want or it's going to be an issue. But it was definitely a much more on stage position than he was in because I was in the military and he wasn't. So let's not, let's also not act like, ooh, Alex was just like, y'all be trying to run this shit. But like, there's no uh, race. There's no race. We are friends. We are business partners. The behind the scenes, he makes sure I'm okay. I make sure he okay. Because you know, when I was at work, um, y'all know I used to work at Budokan and I was one of three black people that worked there. So me and my friend Jordan, we were having my conversation 
Like Jordan likes to say the N word a little bit more than I do, but we would have our conversation in front of white people. We would make them uncomfortable, like on purpose by like exchanging N words. We would go back and forth and you know, they would just be looking like, oh, mm -hmm. we would have delight in making white people uncomfortable. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Is that the one thing that you miss? <laughs> the one thing that I miss. What else has been going on? Because I feel like my week has been consumed by Beyonce. Oh, well, you know what? Some housewives news. Let me tell you that story I told y'all on Patreon. So y'all are only going to get half of this story. If you want to know the rest of the tea, you're going to have to subscribe to the Patreon. It's $4. It's patreon.com slash cdiggy1. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, I said that a housewife jumped in my DMs after my uh, review of Housewives of Dubai. So one of the Dubai women stepped into my DMs and had some words for me. And it was positive. She watches. I, I, I was beside myself. I was like, wait, a housewife watches my show? I had a problem with them. Uh, I've been telling him he's been talented for years, but he doesn't listen to me. I'm glad he's listening to her. Yes. So it was a housewife from Dubai. I cussed her ass out. I might have called her a bitch because I'm triggered when people are treating weight staff wrong. I don't care if you are my friend. I will check you if you don't tip. And I will check you if you treat service staff wrong. Now, if the service is terrible, you know, whatever. I will tip 10% for bad service. But if they're doing their job, right. But anyway. And you know what I'll do? I'll just cross my knife and my fork over the plate and remove my hands from the poor dish. <laughs> at least that's what I did at Fig and Olive. I took one slice of that omelet. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. You can, you can serve your racism to someone else. <laughs> and if you want to actually see that review, check out our trip to Los Angeles four years ago. That's a scavenger hunt for y'all. Go look for it. It's, it's there. The LA trip, it's there. Uh, but yes, me and this housewife, we had an exchange and I respect her. You know, like I'm glad that she, you know, cleared it up for me. I told her it was nothing personal. And yeah, I told them they are having a stellar season and I'm enjoying it. So shout out to that housewife. If you want all the tea, uh, I have the Pop Rose Extra up. Um, it should be up. Yeah, by the time this airs, it, it should be already up on my channel. And if you really want to see Chris shine as a host, check it out. Because not only does he know what questions to ask and what questions to filter through, you really see him come into his own as his own show host, as his own late night host. And that's why I'm there every month because I love to see it. It is amazing, right. it is awesome. And the questions, the questions, I wish I was coming up with them. <laughs> yeah, so we let y'all like ask us the questions and it's fun for us to do it every month. And y'all ask good questions. But sometimes I know he acts like y'all came up with them, but I'm just like, I know you cooked that up. You like Andy Cohen. But here's the thing. You're like Andy Cohen. You're not like Carlos Chang. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> Andy Cohen got shit done and got his $15 million, and so will you. Thank you. I would do the Carlos King voice, but I just had a chest pull last week, and my throat hurt. <laughs> I would do it, but I was sucking dick. I'm joking, I wasn't. I really wasn't. That's look, why it's funny, because I wasn't. Look, my chest felt like I was deep throat in an ashy bit. That's <laughs> what it feels like when you have a chest cold. It's like you deep throated an ashy dick. Now, what was I saying? Oh, so I was editing the episode of Pop Rose Extra, the, the one we just did. We were both duck walking. <laughs> it is hilarious. Oh my God! <laughs> So I did a duck walk tutorial for Alex and he tried to. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Tried is the key word. Succeed tried. was not in the mix. I tried. If you want to see his act of food duck walking too, it's on that episode as well. But yeah, 
Isn't Beverly Hills Housewives, they, they are giving us everything this season. Everything. I am pleased Erica is drunk. If I was Erica, I would already be hopping on to the next coot dick. But then again, I would never be in Erica's position because I'm sorry, I'm not a stupid white woman. And no disrespect to any white women watching because any white women watching this show, I'm sure you're intelligent and unracist. So I respect you and I want the best for you. But I, I'm not a stupid white woman. I'm not a stupid black, I'm not stupid. Regardless, no matter what race I came into this world, what sexuality, I, Alex would never have been stupid. And Alex works with any sex, any gender. I always would have been Alex and I always would have been smart. And if you were with Tom, he'd be dead by now. Oh, <laughs> he wouldn't have made it to meet Aaron Brockovich. I would have cashed in on his life insurance. I would have showed him what a scammer was. I would have been like Rita G in the Kanye West flashing lights video. So this story is about a person we talked about. Um, and I got to say, what a fall from grace. So Andrew Gillum, remember him? He had such, I... he had such a bright future that was ruined by poppers and... Um, <laughs> and gays. Not on Pride Weekend. I know, not on Pride Month. Oh my God. I, oh my, one of my friends has like bought a necklace that is literally like a, a bottle of poppers that you pour your poppers in so you can have it on the dance floor. And I was like, child, go ahead, honey, go ahead. But I, I blame the state of Florida because I'm sorry. I think these are literally trumped up charges. I don't know why Andrew Gillum would stay in Florida knowing what was going on there. I don't know if I believe it. Unlike Sissy Smollett, I believe that other entities would conspire to create evidence against him. Now, Sissy Smollett, I don't believe that about. Yeah, he was so close to being, I think, the new governor of Florida, and they were like, not today, and we're going to ruin your life in the, in the meantime. So Andrew Gillum, uh, who ran against Ron DeSantis in 2018, is now charged with fraud and conspiracy. Uh, he was hit with a 21-count federal indictment on Wednesday. The attorney's office announced the campaign-related charges Wednesday, stating 42-year-old Gillum and 53-year-old Ledman Hicks illegally solicited funds through false and fraudulent promises and representations that the funds would be used for a legitimate purpose. Prosecutors say the defendants concocted a plan that would divert the money to companies owned by Letman Hicks, who would then funnel the funds to Gillum for his personal use. The alleged scheme reportedly took place between 2016 and 2019. Mm -mm -mm. And he surrendered to the FBI on Wednesday. Obama. Right? But but that's what politicians do. But the and, and that's the only fraud going on in Florida. Now I ain't gonna even say he innocent, but what other Florida politicians have been brought up on charges? Because the only black man is being brought up. Where are the honkies? I said it was Mrs. Oyehu, and I'm gonna say it here. Where are the honkies? Well, he's facing 45 years in prison if found guilty. So did you see the College Hill trailer for the new, uh, you know, the BT Plus show that NeNe Leakes is on? Does I, it look interesting to you? No, no. And Stacey Dash being antisocial to Black people is not a plot line. Did you see that? She was taking an African-American studies class? I, honestly, they all need to. They may be African-American, but none of them give me a I've studied T, except for freedom. Yeah, I, I'd say that. I'll be reviewing the show, but this will be a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what? I need to start doing that. I need to get on the YouTube. I need to be like, look, I'm going to do this and this and this on YouTube. If you want to see the bullshit, I'm sorry. I'm going to need some money. Also, I'm going to say this. People ask me, when is Cooking with Alex coming back? I remember announcing Cooking with Alex was coming back 
and nobody joined the Patreon, which means nobody paid for the ingredients, which means there were no videos made. I was like, well, shit, if it's two people, I can refund that. Um, but uh, will you be reviewing College Hill? I will because I am enjoying Nene's Tamar Braxton face. She has been looking, well, I wouldn't even say it's Tamar Braxton's face. I think she's got a good makeup artist now or a good photographer. I don't know, whichever one. Well, I think like Mariah Carey, it's a mix. Okay. <laughs> a good photographer, a good photo editor, a good makeup artist. I mean, I could look 20 pounds lighter if I had a makeup artist. The thing is, when Bad Boys LA went off, I need a new show to do. So I was like, uh, I guess I'll do College Hill. I mean, it, it does not look good, but I'm going to give it a shot. Well, neither did Nene's Teeth on the first season of Housewives of Atlanta, but production gave her a shot, so so should we. Oh, and speaking of new shows, uh, we got the first three episodes of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. I didn't see an episode yet. It's been a really busy weekend for me. Uh, have you? I'm catching up after Pride. Okay, yeah, I mean, look, we're gay. It's been a long-ass week. <laughs> it's Pride weekend. We have a lot to do. And I know I'm going to be busy tomorrow. Like, getting this show out is like my Pride weekend mission. It's like, as long as I get this out, you know, as long as I'm like, okay, here's the edited version by tomorrow at noon, I'm good. That's it. That's all y'all getting from me. I will see you all Monday. Love <laughs> you. Mean it. See you Monday. <laughs> yeah, like, well, first I heard that it's really good, the show, and I can't wait to watch it. But I will let you get to your pride festivities. I know you need to get your uh, your poppers chain. <laughs> to have I that do around. not have a poppers chain. Sure, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, y'all, um, I think we've reached the end of the episode, so we will see you sooner than Democrats get their shit together. And we will see you sooner than they are finished doing the work on the damn pool deck because the noise is driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm praying it's not leaking into the episodes. It hasn't so far, but like, there's a jackhammer outside of my window right now and not in the good way. I can't hear anything. You're, you're good. Oh my God. Hold on. Let me show you what's going on. Let me show y'all what the hell is going on. And then they do this shit at the beginning of damn summer. It's like literally fucking June. Hold on. This is the best outro. Hold on. Sure, like I can't even see the damn screen. Okay. This is what's going on. Can you hear oh, it? Wow. Wow. That is really right outside your door. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've dug up all the plants. It's a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking construction zone. I'm going to see if I can get money off my rent because this is going to be going on for three months. Oh, and then guess what? Look at my beautiful fucking pool. It's green. They're not even putting chemicals in it anymore to keep people out of it. It's like all fenced off. Like all of the trees are gone. Like they're going to plant new trees. Oh, and stuff. yeah. It it's, is green. Yeah. There it is. I see it. Oh, and there go the jackhammers. Mm -hmm. Jackhammers in a green pool. That should be the name of the album. What? <laughs> that's an album title. No, that's too depressing. But this is only for a couple of months. Once they've, once they've you know, fixed everything, it'll be nice again. But yeah, it's like, who loses their pool for the summer? I'm, they're going to take money off this damn rent. Y'all getting a nice, a, a cute fourth wall break. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we will see you soon. We love you and have a wonderful Pride weekend. And stay diligent, stay alert, and stay safe. Bye.